Um, thanks for coming. Um, this is a meeting, not the regular meeting, but a meeting of the Southwood Agricultural Commission, uh, April 20th, 2022, uh, rescheduled from last week. South Bird Hansen, uh, Lydia DeBover, Marissa DeBover Dom, Shakini, Tammy Sayatisalan on Zoom, and Sage Fury also in the room. So we have to be recorded. So we can get going. Anybody knows? Sure, everybody knows there's the art show this, this weekend, uh, right, right here. Uh, there's also, I don't know if this is a first ever, but there's a cornhole tournament on May 15th. What else fun game? I didn't realize we have any tournaments. Um, can you just give me a, a printout of the budget? And we, I think we talked about this last time, maybe it's a little bit. $332.92 are encumbered for the brochure. And we just have to be sure that that gets invoiced before June 30th. And then actually last week, I got an email from uh, Cindy Barton, who is on Zoom. Hello, hello, Cindy. Thanks for joining. Hi, thank you for having me. No, I don't know how. Usually it's booming. I know. It sounds like it's still on the computer. Yeah. Audio part portion of it. You can... I yeah, I thought so. Yeah. I mean, I see it's flickering like crazy, so I don't know if maybe the owl's having issues. Okay. Cindy, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So anyway, Cindy's a part-time secretary for the Board of Health here in town, and also a student at the uh, UMass uh, School of Agriculture, the Stockbridge School. And so she asked for some advice and guidance. She has two finals due next month. Uh, looking for farms and programs for one class, uh, she has to take part in an active food system that serves the community. Uh, and the second project is a hands-on project that's directly related to improving farm management or marketing. So, Cindy, I think you're looking, are these sort of internship type things? Um, next year, I'll have to do an internship, probably around this time of year. But right now, I just have finals. <laughs> she said next time next time next time they'll be looking for the in terms at least that's what i think i heard okay. <laughs> maybe have to repeat that seems like the volume might be up can you start talking again Cindy, could you say that again? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I'm going to be. Wait a sec. We just lost you. Can you guys hear me? There you are. So can you say again what you just said about the internships? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I think we need to talk into the owl because that's how they oh, hear us. So yes. yes, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear did you hear everything that I said before? Or do you want me to repeat it again? Yeah, please repeat it. So I'm going to be needing an internship next year before graduation, probably around this time of year. But then right now I'm just doing finals. Okay. 
So how, how can we help you? Um, I was just wondering if you guys have any of the, um, in the email I sent to you, hold on, I'm trying to pull up my doc. My computer is going really slow. Just to be, I didn't know if you guys had like a farm to school, to schools program or anything like that. I don't think so, unfortunately. As a matter of fact, last meeting, we had a presentation by a high school student who we asked to look into future farmers of America. And there's really, it's kind of sad to say there are, there are no programs for students in Southwick who might want to get into agriculture. Okay. And I, um, do you guys have any um, programs for farmers or future farmers that are classes they take that are for management and marketing for, of their farm or any farms that are large that have someone who runs that for them? Um, a lot of the farms in town, I mean, they, they have social media and they do some marketing to the degree that they have ads sometimes in the local papers, but it's usually by the farmer themselves or a family member who is farming with them. None of them have like dedicated marketing teams as far as I know because um, we don't have big farms in town per se where they would probably need a team um, or, or someone dedicated to just marketing okay uh, I mean is you, are, when you say finals is this a research project is this something that you're trying to get data for or no um, I just didn't know if you guys had any resources that would help me do my like complete my final this this is like it's a research paper i can either do like a 10 page research paper or do a hands-on project so i was trying to do like a hands-on like observe a farm or someone that you guys had that would be someone good to observe on either the marketing or the um, direct being part of something for the town Okay, thanks yeah. for clarifying. I know, you know, through the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources, there are grants available for farm management and farm, you know, incentives <clears throat> for farm improvement. Um, I don't know if through them, you might be able to, you know, somebody who's applying for that kind of a grant um, might be a possibility. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you the information that I have about that and we'll see, see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. What, uh, just curious, what is there a particular type of agriculture or farming that you're interested in? Well, I just learned about this past semester future farming and I'm kind of interested in that, but I also um, in the long run kind of wanted to work for the cannabis control connection in Worcester to help regulate and form laws for cannabis farming. Oh, okay. And when you say future farming, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, one that was really interesting to me was underwater farming. Oh, okay. Like so like uh, uh, agriculture that is employing like sometimes new technology and, and new methodologies, and that's what future farming means. Yeah. Gotcha, thanks. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do. Thank you for uh, asking. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So we have two sets of minutes now, one from March 9th and then a very brief one from last week when we had to um, reschedule. I got this little fun fact. I got a I got an email from the town clerk, Michelle Hill, you know, saying, you know, so I had communicated to her and Carl Steinhardt, you know, mm -hmm. that you know, because of open meeting laws, we just wanted to be, you know, do the right thing. We, you know, so we rescheduled the meeting. And she said, Well, that's you know, great, you know, quick thinking on your part. 
Oh, and, and I responded. So I'm not usually accused of quick thinking, but <laughs> <laughs> and she gave us some information about um, it's actually on tonight's agenda. Agenda in the event of closure of town hall due to inclement weather or any uh, any other emergency, the hybrid format shall switch to remote meeting, Zoom only for the hosted meeting, which is great. Except in the situation we had last week, where it was Zoom that wasn't working wouldn't exactly apply. But anyway, it's a, uh, so anyway, so if you want to take a minute to look at those, uh, take a minute to look at the minutes. For this canceled meeting last week, is Sage already sworn in and participating as a member? Because I don't see his name oh. on the uh, on the form as one to sign. It was mentioned, but because it wasn't a legal meeting, oh. it wasn't part. So okay. you may want to mention that for this meeting. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, Sage is uh, has been appointed and has been sworn in. So as of what the previous meeting before as yeah, well. Yeah, okay, yeah. so when he came, he was already even yes. if it, when the meeting was not a legal meeting, he was legally here as his commissioner. So right. <clears throat> so I would think that his name would be here so that he can sign off and affirm that that was, was a canceled meeting. Alternates, do they count? They yeah. count if there's. Uh, I mean, Zach's name's on there as uh, an alternate. Yeah. He wasn't here last meeting. Yeah. Was well, Brett? Right. Just scratch his name off. Yeah. Name on there. I mean, I think usually everyone who serves on the commission, their names are on there. It's just the ones who, right? Only the ones yeah. who are actually present or were present for that meeting yeah. and can so attest to the minutes can sign for it. Normally works, James. Just the people who are here are on the list. No, <clears throat> everybody's on the list. But only the ones that were here to sign. Okay. Okay. So the full committee stays on every minute. Okay. Okay. But yeah, so I think in that case, I think we sure. should add um, Sage, since he had been sworn in uh, yeah. prior right. to last week's meeting. Right. Yeah. But there was no action taken at last week's meeting to introduce Sage as. Uh, the alternate oh. member. Even though he was sworn in and everything, I got it. Okay. 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 So since you introduced him, then he'll be on the next time. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Now, okay. Since right. We're on the record. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want me to put his name on there, I have no problem. But essentially, it's problem. just a seven minutes saying that it was a technical yeah. error. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Thank okay. you for clarifying. <clears throat> yeah. Any Any other? Um, Comments or questions? So, so I think we probably can do these together. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 9th and of April 13th, 2022, as presented. Uh, second. Okay, Anita seconds. Uh, for Hanson, aye. Aye. Ron Chikini, aye. Marissa? Aye. Anita? Aye. And oh, Sage? Hi. And Tammy. Hi. <laughs> okay, good. So Thank you. those present at the meeting on March 9th and on April 13th, just sign. You read sign. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, because that's just the signature page. Yeah. This is the rest of it, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. so. 
Now, do we need not to get into the weeds here, but do we, for example, do we need to have Tammy come in and sign this at some point? Since no. She's here? no. No. Because once when you were all zo on Zoom, nobody yeah. signed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. Legal. Yeah. So. Yeah, one or two people in here. <laughs> <laughs> we were confused with meeting us. <laughs> I mean, not even my mom's here. <laughs> I, don't I don't think she knows there's a meeting tonight. Yeah, our other, our other, you know, club, yeah you know, I think everyone was <laughs> thrown off schedule a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love schedules. <clears throat> it's hard to go rogue. <laughs> so I think everybody that's here tonight was here last week and I just you know just as we just were saying to Cindy um, it was really kind of disappointing to find out that there's really no agricultural education yeah. 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 No yeah. In the day, nothing in the schools I think that was an awesome idea that we kind of collectively had like that you in particular we're talking about Marissa you know with, you know, having a, you know, a facility, like, you know, a building at the Big E or someplace, and yeah. make a center for agriculture. Yeah. Uh, that's also a huge project. Yeah, a huge one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but one of these days, perhaps we can at least connect with yeah. some other FFA groups or. Yeah. Um, See, some land trusts have like educational arms. And because they tend to get funding and subsidies um, from organizations or even from the government sometimes, and they kind of are dedicated to advocacy as well with, you know, conservation, agriculture. If there is ever a Southwick Land Trust, it's something that could maybe be presented. Uh, it's a small scale project, an educational arm, perhaps, to work with students. Um, I'm concerned with a town known for it. Yeah, I mean, farming town, the right to farm community. I mean, I think yeah, we, mm. we're trying to bring along some farmers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring your own knowledge. We can't provide it, but you know, we do want to come. <laughs> yeah, you know, it goes hand in hand with land conservation, too. If you're preserving farms, you also want to preserve like, the act of agriculture. So. Oh. It almost doesn't make sense to keep preserving if there isn't a next generation of people who can take it over. I so yeah. and make that productive and mm -hmm. like you said before too, the science of it is still a, a thing of its own, and the more people know how to take care of the soils and stuff like that, and test them, and uh, make sure they're all right for farming, it helps the next generations as well. Yeah, they know where to grow. Mm -hmm. And staying on top of, I mean, Cynthia just said it, future farming and different methodologies that are coming out that I know when they were talking about those guys from West, I think it was Westfield had come into a planning board meeting a few months ago to talk about possibly putting in a, um, a grow facility for marijuana on 202, but it happens to not be in the overlay district. Right. So I don't think there's been any traction on that. The methods that they were talking about using were very circular in terms of recycling water it would be inside the building um so i mean it's something to think about in terms of what's coming down the pipeline whether we like that or not or consider that to be the farming we grew up with or come from it's coming you know so it's something you have to think about as well or educate for i guess <laughs> the next generation um, and that, that's another, the whole, another sort of a project, what, how that overlay process works. I mean, who, who can change that? I mean, does it have to be town meeting? Town meeting, right. It's one way to change it, yeah. yes. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, the Master Plan Advisory Committee, there was a meeting a couple of weeks ago. There's another one tomorrow night. Uh, the meeting we had two weeks, it was on, uh, what, what day was on? <clears throat> was a lot of good conversation about the Master Plan, the survey that's going to be done of the public, um, the marketing materials, uh, The it's going to be called uh, Southwick 2040. And then creating our future as a kind of a tagline. You know, have photos of aerial photos of farms and subdivisions and stuff like that. The um, the uh, there's, a little, there's a little mascot who's going to be named Jog. Um, <laughs> he, he, he or it kind of looks like the town. It's, a, it's the map, and then he's got hands. And, uh, <laughs> it's really cute. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> so that's going to be the mascot, uh, which was created by. Uh, hmm? Give him a little anchor. Yeah. <laughs> Since you're the anchor of mass, you know. Yeah. Um, it's created by Dave McWilliams' son, Charlie. I don't know if you know Dave, he's on conservation. And, so let's see they want the survey has been with the committee's input the survey has been mostly developed by pioneer valley planning commission and um want to finalize the survey and start using it start getting the public's input by the end of may uh, and have a an announcement or a you know a rollout at, at town meeting um, have that be sort of the official Mm -hmm. start date <clears throat> um there, is there going to be anything at the art show marissa is, is that coming together in terms of marketing material yeah in terms of a, you know, a oh. flyer or a table or oh, a, yeah uh, uh, there, that's okay. going to be um okay. that's going to have some folks there who have volunteered uh from the master plan committee uh, to take a few shifts over the course of those two days this weekend um, yeah, and I have some marketing material. The brochures, unfortunately, won't be done by then because there's yeah. like a three-week print time. But I've developed like a one-sheet master plan thing, uh, just kind of very basic, based off of the brochure that I'll just be able to print here at Town Hall and have enough copies to get them through the weekend to at least not squander the opportunity of the art show because, yeah. I'm told, it's very popular and it's pretty frequented, so there's a lot of traffic mm -hmm. and it would be good to make sure there's something, so... I'll present that tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was kind of funny at, at the meeting. Somebody was talking, you know, people were talking about, well, should we have something at the art show? Do a, do a lot of people come to that? And Doug Bogan says, well, a heck of a lot more than come to the town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's people from other towns that come by as well, right. you know, sure. all neighboring towns. So. <laughs> um, to one point that you made about the survey, um, I just kind of gave it a cursory view i wasn't at the meeting so i didn't get to participate um but one thing that did concern me and i'm on that master plan committee as a resident you're on there as the agcom um, right. person representative um i noticed that there was kind of a not many questions about open space or conservation mm -hmm. or agriculture and i was wondering how the agcom can make sure that that's something that is presented tomorrow I think this is our opportunity. I know there's been conversation about how the open plan um, that came out a few years ago that had a survey with it as well, I think in 2018. So some people have kind of referred to that as, oh, that was a chance that the townspeople had an opportunity to say something about open space, farming, conservation. But the master plan is a totally different thing. This is a whole different process. The town has been through a lot since then as well. I think people have a different opinion um yeah. about yeah. land in town and where we're going so well, and, uh, and just that we've been through covid also yeah. which yeah. brought people back to their communities big time exactly yeah. that's a great yeah. point so, yeah. right yeah. there was some conversation at the last meeting of master plan um and some of those comments well we are we just had the survey about open space of course now we, when you're talking three years that's right. kind of a long time right. uh so we don't really need to focus on that four years but then, yeah yeah but then the the rebuttal was well if we don't include open space and farming questions in the survey it's going to skew the right the result you absolutely know, it won't, absolutely it won't be represented sort of right so right. hopefully we will right yeah yeah it would be good to make sure that uh agcom 
being part of the master plan process advocates for that mm. because it's a different world. It's a different world in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And back then when that open space survey was done, there wasn't any concrete plan at that time from what I understand as to whether the master plan was going to take off, the planning process for it, when it was going to happen. So I think it's apples to oranges, honestly. It's good data that came from that survey, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's time to think in the bigger picture sense. And I think AGCOM needs to make sure that we include questions about that in the survey. So what, sorry, Marissa. Um, what kinds of questions were asked on the one and would we want it to be something similar or different to kind of go along with how things have changed? Because I have something that I was going to share that might be relevant to that. I'm not sure what you guys think, but. Okay, yeah. yeah um, please do. So one of the things it's been, I don't know, a few weeks now, I guess, but I went to the um, pollinator program at the library that was put on by the PAP, sorry, the Mass Pollinator Network which was formed in 2021. So it's relatively new. Um, you know, they were always doing these projects, but they officially formed their own organization. And one of the things that they've been working on are called pollinator. Well, there's a thing, it's in Connecticut, but called pollinatorpathways.org. But they work on repairing fragmented landscapes, connecting isolated green spaces to kind of help, um, they say bee buffets to kind of help save the bees. <laughs> And they um, they have a right, they have a link somewhere on there to the um, a pollinator action plan that was done from Great Barrington in 2018 and how the AgCom raised the money for that. And they talked a lot about how you know even just like small little spaces um, like a you know a small front yard and then neighbors down the road another small front yard are kind of like lines up with um, you know, the bees and other pollinators and kind of gives them a route. Hmm. They call it bee buffet, which I thought was kind of cute. Yeah, really, yeah. But could we ask something like what people's thoughts would be about like pollinator? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to word it right now, but something along that. Um, yeah, that, that would be, and I think, you know, maybe even a little bigger picture I've been thinking you know, shouldn't we have a strategy for what for land that we want to preserve in town, whether it's farmland or open space? <clears throat> you know, farmland for farming, and open space for you know wildlife migrations, and and that which connects to what you're saying, Tammy. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not sure at the moment how to include that in the survey either. But yeah, good point. I wonder if we should even ask Lynn, <clears throat> Lynn Blair for some input. She's not on the committee, but uh, master plan committee. Uh, but she seems to be very in tune with sort of conservation and agriculture. She seems to want to, you know, promote that. Uh, she had several programs at the mm -hmm. library about these kinds of things, which I don't think we've ever had before. <clears throat> Um, would it matter though she's not a resident i don't know if it matters or not she's not she lives in westfield yeah uh, well one thing we could also do i don't know if grandy actually did a master plan but um we could always ask them to see if they ever added anything in for theirs because mm -hmm. they have the whole uh farm day and stuff they're they're right. active in their farming so maybe they use something that we could take too that's a good point yeah just gotta reach yeah. out to them yeah, they've done a good job with their community balancing. As well. Trying to find Ask our names. Yeah. Definitely. People have been before. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find the old survey that was presented at that meeting, and I can't find it on my phone. I've only seen the newer one that is going to be discussed tomorrow. Do you remember any questions about open space or farming relevant to this? Um, are relevant to us in that yeah, survey? I don't off the top of my head. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah me neither. Yes. I don't think there's there have been a lot of questions <clears throat> on, on these kinds of topics because again, the thinking being, well, we have the the four year old survey, you know. So. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's working farms and forests. 
Yeah, Forest that's a good well, point. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really good point. I think that should definitely be included as well. There's a lot of, yeah. I mean, those are big tracts of land too. Yeah. Right? And then Mr. Wally has one on next the road. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a big space there. That's yeah. effectively. Yeah, it must be a hundred something acres. Right. I got 55. <clears throat> Good point. Yeah, and a lot of the you know, the grants we just were mentioning with you know MDAR and others, or the you know sixty one A designations, forest forestry is included in those. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the USDA has a lot of functions for forest too. You know, mm -hmm. Grants and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's part I of got farming. A couple for, yeah. I got one for invasive species. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It's one thing you have to keep under control. Stuff spreads so fast, some of those yeah. things. The Wally land is lowered. Yeah, that needs the, some... US, the lady from the USDA says take take a year with a backhoe to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Invasives are not good for pollinators, you know, right? Or sort of other, you know. Yeah. Up the chain. Um, so. Okay, so that's good. That was some good input. Um, and Tammy, let's connect, you know, offline, so to speak, and um, talk about that a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, the right to farm disclosures. Melissa, did you say you have? Like yeah, I don't know how we can put it up on the screen though to review it. That's the one you sent me, right? Yes. Yeah, I can put it up there. You, you know how to do that, Sage? Yeah, okay. I just gotta share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Yep, there it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I um, I basically just copied and pasted the text that Bert had sent. Mm -hmm. I It's very text dense. I actually cut down a little bit so it was even denser than this, just yeah. copying the other one. I still <laughs> think it's pretty text dense. I don't know if I were to get that in the mail. I mean, I'd see like farm stuff on it, so I'd be interested and I'd read it because that's, you know something I like, but I feel right. like maybe other people <laughs> would say like, yeah, what definitely. is all of this? So, yeah. but it's informative. So I don't know. Um, it kind of explains what exactly right to farm is because the idea is that if these are folks who are moving into Southwick and they are moving to a, a still rural place, they have to understand right. what it's about, what right. protections farmers have, what it includes, odors, you know, equipment, sound, you know, transiting through traffic with tractors on the same roads. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I need to include that. I don't think I put the part about transiting on the same roads and mm -hmm. folks having the right to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I can add, great, add more text. Um, <laughs> no. You said you, you sent that to me as well as- Yes. So yeah, okay. I'm yeah. sure we can cut that. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little too technical. Um, I thought it was a little like verbose and I, I tried to make it a little bit more approachable sounding. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know if you guys think the layout is overall okay, more photos, less text. Um, mm. It looks nice. Yeah, the photo of the tractor is great. Mm. You know, that's, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of from sensitive. Andrew Solek, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you need more room, just do a legal legal size. <laughs> well, F that's true. Five <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true, that's true. <laughs> And I'm remembering that there's like two paragraphs of footnotes at the bottom, the footnote type of thing. Well, yeah, and I don't bottom. know whether that's necessary yeah. to throw on there because that the bottom part is all just Massachusetts state or, or the bylaw from the town handbook, which I don't know. I mean, if it's literally directed from the handbook. Can't we just say like, here's the link for it? Yeah, mm -hmm. some kind of directory to it. Yeah. Go here if interested. Right, right. For more information or to read right. on it, yeah. because no one wants to be dictated laws either, you know? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's kind yeah. of like a little bit 
uh, yeah. that people just yeah. ignore in general. Yeah, it's that's the thing. Else. Right, right. Yeah. It's got to be more accessible. Yeah. Um, so I can remove that bottom part then and just include the link to the town website. Um, yeah. And maybe that'll give me a little bit more space. And then I can. Yeah. Let's we'll, we'll yeah. go through. I'm sure, <clears throat> sure we can. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And remind me again, what's the pipeline for this? How does it actually get to new homeowners? Through uh, realtors, I think is the idea. Now, will they do it? I don't know. I think another. Actually, another audience for this is is town hall, um, right? To, to yeah, because they have to come and establish licenses and stuff like that yeah. all the time. So why not have a thing where they just grab it from town hall? Right. Yeah. So would the idea be we print this out and give it to the town clerk, and then they work with the realtors? Because we're not going to go and, and yeah. find every realtor that works in Southlake. <laughs> the idea is that it would be kind of. Yeah. I don't and know what the process is. We can't make them, I don't think. You know, right, like, right, like, yeah. We, we at least get it out there and uh, yeah. you know, circulate it here in town hall. And there's, there's a lot of people, you know, on the select board and others here that are supportive of farming, but I don't know if in the sort of the, the sort of the rank and file employees here, yeah. um, uh, what's their mm -hmm. level of awareness of, you know, is this something that should be, uh, be brought up to the select board, maybe, so that they can hopefully maybe make yeah. a motion to perhaps uh, yep. ask their employees or town employees to, or whoever is connected <laughs> to the realtors to oh, distribute yeah. this? Well, yeah. One question I would have is, does our town hall have a welcome package? Because all the traveling I did for my company oh. for... Uh, customers i go through the states and go through the towns and every town hall had a sign somewhere saying hey come to town hall and we have a, a welcome package has all of our like things that we do yeah. things that we uh, have going on for events and so like this and it's just like a little go bag yeah. even for tourists and stuff like this but yeah. it's like do we have one of those because yeah, if not you should start one yeah. farming community right the yeah. farm all is we got tons of stuff we can list on the thing not. Add a brochure one. to it too. Visit these farms now yeah. that you're living in town. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Make sure to visit these farms and patronize yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. A little tangent. One one way I heard this described very briefly that I love is if somebody's eating bacon, somebody else is smelling a pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. I love that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, I, I suggest we mention this to the select board yeah. if it is going to involve the town clerk just to make sure that it's, yeah. you know, it might it might bolster it a little bit as well yeah. if there's kind of a, an understanding yeah. of yeah. what yeah. we're doing, you know, and, and why least, we're doing it. At least one select board meeting, I did bring this topic up, Yeah, but I think having the actual, you know, flyer and say, okay, here's, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, get some promotion behind it. Well, I'll also do this since I may be taking a new position and traveling again. Uh, I'll every time I pass through, I have to see one of those. I'll stop by and actually get those so we have examples. Okay, awesome. great. Yeah. There's a couple options. Yeah, this past Monday was a holiday, so there was no select board meeting, so I didn't have my usual slot on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> if I went to like four in a row yeah. <laughs> about the you know the appointments and all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and the uh, farm brochure. Marissa, do we, uh, uh yeah, no, I'm still <laughs> waiting for that to get printed. So is it all set all set though? Um, uh, I'm working with Southwoods on finishing up the template. So okay. um I'm actually waiting to hear back from them. I pinged them early this morning, but didn't get a response <laughs> yet. I think they're a little flooded with stuff, but mm -hmm. it's it's in progress, I guess. It's... Okay, good, good. Well, let me just switch a little bit on the agenda with the <clears throat> Meadowview, Meadowview Farm. <clears throat> Obviously, it's not going to be in the brochure. Does anyone, do we know? I mean, I guess late, late either you might know. Are they going to sell that? And do you know every per day? Uh, I believe most of it is under APR. Mm -hmm. 
Um, from what I heard, there were multiple people interested, but nobody could make a deal. Um, I I sus and I think it was some of the you know the big guys out of Manchester because they you know, they sell a lot of plants. There's you know a lot of big guys in Cromwell and Manchester, Connecticut. You know these big oh, okay. operations, but yeah. um, I don't know. Mm. I I really it was kept under wraps. None of us. Mm, I found out about it from a from a salesman. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, I, I really, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. My suspicion is that it, it might be a hard sell to, as a greenhouse, uh, to sell it to be what it already was might be a hard sell because anybody that is going to want to come up and do that much business in that one place is really probably going to want state-of-the-art greenhouses, not 40 houses, not 40 hoop houses. Okay. They're going to want gutter connected, big, you know. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's, 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 it, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Another yeah. level of yeah. investment yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. 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 So I think that that is going to be, and more props to him for being willing to do that. It's hard work. That's how I do it. But you got an alarm on every single house, you know, on a cold night, you're, you're, you're trotting around, you know, but, um, but he was willing to do it. And that's, that's great. But I don't know if it's going to make it very saleable. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so I don't know. Unfortunately, I just have it sit there. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I don't know. Speaking of that, I wonder um, if there would be a kind of a fine line to walk here, but you know, people are obviously a lot of people go to Medellin Farm. Should we, is there a way we could like advertise other farms in town? Say, hey, is Medellin the only one? You know, you um, I, we're, I think we're going to be overwhelmed as it is. Oh, really? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because like a lot of people, a lot of people do know about it from Facebook and stuff, but a lot of people don't, and I think they're gonna just go right up the road. Oh, so, okay. yeah, I, it's I, I we already have people coming in and fighting and get in the greenhouse when it's not even things that aren't, aren't even ready, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I think I think I may be wrong. I don't know. And the other thing is, is that that business was started. And in the beginning, he came in and it was, the way they started it was they were cheaper than wholesale. Um, it was uncomfortable for a lot of the other farms in town because as, as people got a load of what their prices were and what he was willing, how he was willing to do business, I would have people still come in and say, what are you, some kind of crook? You some kind of are you trying to rob me? I can you know, and I'm like, no, we're trying to get a a a, a, a fair price for yeah. for a product. So, a lot of the people that have been coming there for years are coming on that premise, and they're not going to find those kind of prices, especially this year, at any other farm in town. The one that is see, does seem to be pushing to capture that business is garden garden stream out of Benfield. Oh right. They're they're hammering hard and they've already got pansies at 279 six pack and that's that's you know that's that's real cheap and they've got billboards and they've been out yeah, yeah. so and honestly you know that's that that's that's a good place for them to go if that's their main concern is how cheap can I get it. Yeah. So yeah. so it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a wild ride I think. Mm -hmm. So We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gardner's dream strikes me as a similar kind of. I, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, I've never been there. I know it's huge, and I know it's yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I've been there so, once. I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been there once too. I didn't find them very affordable at all. Really, really. Yeah, so they're, they're already hammering pretty hard on it. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, if it makes you feel better, Lenita, I don't remember where I was today, but I was somewhere in 
um, a couple of parents with their kids and they said, oh, we got to go stop at Blossoming Acres. And I was like, yep, go, go, go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So. Okay, well, okay, so no advertising. Not a bad idea, but. <laughs> uh, so, to back up uh, one in the agenda, so 72 Mort Mining Road. Um, some recent, recent development that's been going back and forth between Art Canal and the Select Board and the Town Attorney. And the latest um, is that the the buyer was saying that once there's a purchase and sale agreement, you know, provided to the town, the land is really in the buyer's hands. That's was his position. Um, town attorney didn't think so. Town council didn't think so. But the, you know, the arts attorney and the buyer's attorney were talking. And so, what's happened now? Uh, bottom line, so to speak, is that. Uh, the buyer is going to buy it while it's still in 61A. I was trying to take it out of 61A um, to sell the house and the barn separately and then preserve mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the acreage. Um, so as it stands right now, um, the buyer is going to buy it as is under the 61A program. Now, if he wants to build houses there, it's got to come out of 61A sometime. <laughs> right. right. So. And at that point, then the town could could take the right of first refusal right. and still preserve it. Right. Then what is the benefit? Yeah. Right. right. Are they going to farm it? It needs to be farmed to stay in 61A. Right. So as far as I know, they, they, it's the same guy who's a developer developing, you know, the uh, 38 more mining you know, right next door. Yeah. yeah. And southern end of more mining. It's the same, it's the same company, same guy. So what's, that, what's that, happening at Port 26 North North? Did uh, you go visit that? Oh, I kind of interrupt for a second. Apparently, they are going to get out of 61A just for meeting. a couple of years so no, that they join can join on Zoom. I'll actually bring that point up to the rest of the well, group. They it seems it got locked decided after. to build well, right now, you know, that I part of their land. Saying, they want to hay it afterwards. Right. But right it. now, because oh. they have to bring in some now, soil and whatnot, it's, it's just not going to be possible to hay for a couple of years. I, I'm, and when you're in 16 a you need to actively <laughs> keep farming it. So they don't want to get dinged with anything. And that's a good point because... Who's that, Toronto? Yeah. Yeah. So he wants to hay it. He doesn't want to do corn again. He wants to hay it so that he can go back into 61A. But he's out of it because if you're not active on it, you don't get the benefit. They're going to build a house there. That's yeah. why they got it. That's why they brought in all the soil in as well, some fill and whatnot for shoring up some area because I think there's some wetness. They won't as well, even let me join it because the brook is going by. The same host is no, You already so, joined. No, no, I, I joined I was second to see if that's what they, that what No, no, right? they're going to stay like within the their land where they like used to grow corn, so it's, but it's still a little wet. Everybody else, so they have to um, put in the crowd. I don't know what that's exactly. Yeah, a hobo in the section. I know. But yep. Yeah. Today it was saying it's blocked by host. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. By host. But no, I don't understand. Yeah. They, they you know, will build their house, be done with it in a year or two, and then start haying, and then go back into 61A because haying counts as 61A. To be a Zoom thing. I don't Confusing. Know. Confusing. But I think they're scared of getting dinged by the government for not farming for two years. Because that's the condition with all these things. You have to actively farm it. Oh, yeah. And if you get, you know, you know any audit or anything, you then pay back the taxes that you got to. No, even with a forest, you got to have the state come in, the foresters yeah. come in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Bert, sorry, that was a, a tangent to the agenda. Point. Are we all set communication wise? Or yeah, I don't see how I, I certain don't... people can be locked out and other people can't. Yeah, I don't so. get out. Unfortunately, I don't know Zoom enough to, to answer this one. Yeah. I, I just know that they can't get Oh, out. yeah. I just got a message too from somebody saying with a screenshot. Host has locked the meeting. I have no idea. 
I, I, I mean, don't know how that's possible. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Then how did that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever you're getting texted by, tell them to try again. I just That's told them to try yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just heard someone join too. That was me testing. Oh, okay. Good. You were able then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not in violation yeah. of the city. No. No, I just... You know that land next to me, you pulled out of it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So who is the 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 real the developer? For That's, the study to yeah. Uh, do they have any connection to farming? Is he? Is he? I don't believe so. Hmm. Do I have that? I think it's the same folks who developed the plot right next door. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. same company. It is. So they're just, exactly. Are they aware of how sixty one A works? It's something like Oak Ridge or something. Like right. That. Um, yeah. I, um, I remember <clears> they bought <throat> the the Miko's land next door. Huh. That's strange. Yeah. That... So now it's between the lawyers. Yeah. Uh, my concern as well is that, okay, they own it and whatnot. They farm it so that it stays in 61A. If they do try to sell it, I mean, what's the price going to be? Is it going to be some exorbitant price where they full well know nobody but a property developer mm. can afford it? I mean, the price right now that we had on the table possibly with art to buy it through um, CPC funds, it was a price that was manageable in terms of what we had as a budget. Right. But is there a contingency in the future that if 61A land sells, you can offer an agricultural price to it versus like a development price? I mean, because that, that seems to be the tactic here, I think, is to try to throw us off possibly until it's at a price point where only a developer can buy it not mm -hmm. a, a town cbc you know right. um, i think they should be aware or there should be some communication that as 61a land it needs to be actively farmed and as ron was saying or brought up the point of 426 North Loomis, which they were at the same exact time as 72. We discussed it at the same meetings mm -hmm. on a few occasions. The Tortorello family, they decided to withdraw from 61A, even though they, they have corn now, right? So they grow corn, they're building a house on their land. Remember they were in the audience mm -hmm. that day. They mm -hmm. came, they explained what their plans were. Dennis asked if they'd be willing to hay the land because they're not gonna use all of their land for their house. They just wanna build a house. It's been in the family. Someone else in the family is gonna move in. So the idea was that they would convert over to hay. They can stay in 61A. They can get a little bit of tax relief. You still get to preserve some farmland. But don't they have to separate the land for the house? Correct. Out of that. Exactly, exactly. And that's kind of the whole process as well. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't be actively farming it for at least two years based off of what his construction plans were. So Mr. Lishness, who I spoke with, was concerned about 61A, you know, going into like some sort of um, default with it because he wouldn't be able to prove over the next couple of years while he's building his house that, you know, he's not going to be able to hay it because he's got everything yeah. turned upside down so it is a real concern for people so maybe it would be good for these developers to know that you know you could get dinged <laughs> yeah. well he's already dug there he can yeah he's out of 61a now oh yeah yeah he oh. got out of it a few weeks ago yeah or months oh. ago i can't remember at this point oh. yeah i had said at one point should they you know keep the five acres in 61a and keep farming it in some just in some way and then build a house, but yep. it sounds like they, that's 
too much at once and they're, yeah. you know, they're going to be constructing the house they won't be able to farm right you know, at the same time yeah you need to so bring out of 61 so. now they can try in the future put five acres back in six correct a, right correct yes so and it also takes time once you've been out of 61a or not been in 61a to prove that you have a couple years worth of active farming on there in order to apply to that so you're gonna get hit with some taxes well that's it yeah you do get hit with taxes yeah exactly <laughs> yeah because that 10 acres next to me the taxes on that are like five thousand dollars i'm paying less than 50 acres yeah no exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly so i sure hope that 72 is going to be farmed then if it's going to stay yeah. <laughs> in 61a <laughs> or hate or something sense, no. yeah. yeah otherwise out that gets policed so to speak with apr land they they come and look at you yeah. right and make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do i wonder if they do that with 61a i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't it know. might be a good faith one it's, you said the state checks with farm uh forest land right with for 61b Check, state ever check? It's you, different. Yeah. Uh, but you're in 61B, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Does the state ever check on your land? Ooh. The state, do they ever check to make sure that you're actually doing forestry and not just... Oh, yeah. The foresters come in. You, can, you can't get into 60. You can't get into that program unless... I'll have to bring you all the yeah, documentation right. I right. have. But do they check up on you yearly or every few years? 10 years every 10 years uh -huh. you got to resubmit you got to get a forester back in the state forester to come in so maybe it's and then your forester yeah works with them so maybe it's something for her farmland i can look into it's, it uh, no it's every five i think oh so more frequent or three every three or five something mine is under 61 even though it's apr and it, nobody's ever come in. No one's ever. All you do is uh, all you do is have to sign the paper every year, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, I saying that you." Uh, oh, I thought it was five years, and I actually I went down to City Hall here, and she says, "Oh no, you're at ten years of forest." Hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll notify you within two years to get it done. Okay, right. Two years. <clears throat> oh, I went through a lot of that. I mean, they, they come in and, and I'll do a complete program of what your land is. Right. Soil and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll bring it in and show you. Oh, yeah, good. Quite interesting. It's too bad then then it sounds like 72 more finding is kind of just getting strong armed by the developer than under some murky legal or i guess not murky maybe yeah. disputed legal standing yeah and, one size and, yeah and coil town council felt that the whole thing was known and void because the the uh, purchase and sale agreement wasn't even presented correctly. correctly yeah it was presented by the buyer not the seller for starters it's supposed to also there's supposed to also be an intent if you're taking out a 61 an intent an intent to use or an intent kind of a document that doesn't exist so uh, it's it is mr pinnell's attorney aware of how it was filed incorrectly and how that could possibly be grounds for I nulling the whole uh, I so we've had we've had meetings about that um, not exactly sure where to go with this now, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> um, That's a shame, yeah, for all the legwork that's been done in research. And knowing that the funds are there, that's the thing, right. you know. I can get back in touch with Art. Um, maybe get in touch with the developer. How I would do it go <laughs> head to head with the developer. <laughs> right. <Dirty. laughs> no, it um, just would stand to reason that if it, if something was filed incorrectly in the town hall side, town hall should then 
some entity, some part of town hall should be able to say this was filed incorrectly. This is invalid. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that then gets carried further, but almost like have yeah. that be part of the paperwork or the paper trail for what it's worth. Um, mm -hmm. I know Dennis has been working, you know, for a few years now to try to get that process done correctly. Um, and this is, I guess, a perfect example of, of why, you know, you do need a process, the right procedure. But hmm. how's it ever been through the USDA? So it's federal. Yours is federal. It's not state. Oh, that makes well, the state too. Yeah. 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 61B is state, but you also have the USDA stuff, right? Wow. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, I couldn't put a bridge across there. Or anything yeah. Else. That's true. Yeah, that's more. Joe Deed is the one who told me about it. That's what he did there because the town stopped him from going across that little brook. Thing. Yeah. Mm. And he registered as a mm. USDA. Right. Mm. Well, we're to uh, the community garden. Uh, Ron uh, tilled it on Sunday. Thank it's you. Good. It looks really good. Good. It's awesome. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah, we're getting some reservations for plots coming in. <laughs> Picture up. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Sage has a uh, an aerial. Yeah, get, kind of a schematic. Gigor's uh, photography gave me some aerial shots that uh, let, allowed me to make this kind of a demo. I was going to do more, but I didn't get the time this week. But the plots are all marked out. I just didn't number them. And what's nice about this is we can actually see if we want to add something. Because I know that we uh, there was a play on possibly having beehives. This would give us a, a way to figure out where they'd be if we didn't allow it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's two, two people who have two plots who have been asking about having a, having a beehive, a beehive so there. Cool. Which, which would be great, except that um, some of the other gardeners are not so happy about that idea. Um, and then, and I don't know, it's Tam, Tam, like Tammy has some, some folks that she wants to bring who would be so her her clients yeah. who would be kind of risk averse, if that's the right way to say, with the with the bees. So allergic. Yeah. So I think I'm going to tell the folks who want to bring the bees, you know, put them in your own yard. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a thought. I mean, um, how much of this uh, uh, community garden that we do currently have? How much of that land do we actually, is it only within the borders of the fence or do we have excess behind it a little bit? Because I'm wondering if you can do a uh, small sub bee garden, just a stone throw away where it'll be out of everyone's way and reach because oh, bees do exist idea. in this world. Well, yeah. so I mean, yeah. but yeah, if it's far enough away, they still tend to their gardens and bees won't bother that. That's uh, maybe up on the hill there is a big meadow up the hill. Up the hill. Um, no, that, that would be a conservation commission question. They control the Sofanowski Preserve. We yeah. just happen to have that little. So I'd really hate to discourage things like that because that is part of farming. We do yeah. get honey from bees. I mean, I, I we think also that... need the bees to pollinate. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People's own gardens <laughs> yeah. there, but it benefits. Should yeah. be helped. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Southwest got quite a business going. Yeah. 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 So I mean, why would we discourage it? Let's see if we can get a, a intermediate there. I agree with Sage. That's a pot of land that belongs to the town, and I feel like it should continue to kind of grow and evolve with the times. And yeah, yeah we can create like a little bee garden, mm -hmm. do our bit for pollinators. We're on the endangered species list, from what I hear too. So let's, let's get their populations back up. Yeah. yeah. Benefit. Would Tammy Kong give you our little bee buffet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you do it? What? The bees. How do you do it? What do you mean? But how do you get them in their uh, their kits and everything? Build it up. It's just a uh, the box that actually you can buy these builder kits. Literally, it'll just be a box that has a uh, little uh, slits in it, and then they'll just build the yeah, cones sure. along the walls, and yeah. you pull them out. You can get the uh, cones and 
do the process. I mean, well, Nina, who used to do the hives on your land? Um, Eric Nitch, but he's not doing it anymore. Uh, My son has so. a big, huge nest in his back garage, like, and he fell out to come in and they wanted those. Oh, yeah. Particular type of bees. Yeah. The, the swarm, they call yeah. it. Yeah. 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 They, they and now, really wanted them. Oh, yeah. 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 They got them out of there. And yeah. now we have Billy C's puts uh, hives on our land. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, on your land? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those swarms are valuable. So, well, we could potentially put a couple of hives up in, uh, of on the edge of that meadow and uh, different types. Or whatever. Buy, you buy a, what's called a package of bees and you. <laughs> and they, they, the bees do the rest. Essentially, all you need is a queen and like a few workers. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, uh, Sabrina isn't here tonight, but she's a, a new beekeeper. She just started this, were the, this year. Were the people that wanted to bring the bees wanting to bring the bees to help pollinate? Is that the idea? Or were they just wanting a place to keep their bees? I think it was more like they want a place to, to, to keep their bees. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out though. Um, but that's oh. a great idea that we just put it someplace else in the preserve. Yeah. And then, yeah. But I think the bees will find the garden. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the whole thing away from all bees. <laughs> <laughs> you have to screen in the whole garden. Yeah. <laughs> so, would the idea then be following up on Lenita's question if it were to move? elsewhere on the land that conservation says okay i mean would there be a rent for using that land then for to to house their beehives still i mean hmm. would that still be a rentable plot i think that's good again ahead of the game let's see if we can get the, yeah get the lobby first. but yeah I, I, yeah no just wondering would at that point conservation mm -hmm on it or, or who you know who manages that it starts to kind of yeah. I, I would think whoever did the upkeep or whoever really was the one in charge of focusing on making sure that things are are done right and the, it's always well kept and everything because that's definitely got to be okay. observed yeah whoever does that should get the credit or the compensation for the plot yeah know, to, to the fund so if conservation takes over that and they monitor that then they should get it if we do it then we should get it i think that's what would be fair I wonder, if, I wonder if Billy C is looking for any additional. You know, I think he is or was. I feel like I saw something. He was looking for places to put hives, I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we're going to start a bee factory. Yeah. I do have a couple of things for the garden as well. Yep. Uh, discussing with uh, my wife, yeah. Pam. Um, We've, we came up with an idea that might actually work pretty well. I don't know when I'd be able to do it, but um, I, we were thinking of a free little library. You know, they have the free library as you go and you, you pull out a book and, okay. and it's self-sustaining so that weather yeah. can't damage it. But I was thinking of, we should put one on the preserve specifically for gardening. Like you'll have the, the beginner's guides, intermediates, and it'll help educate people while they're planting or even their kids are there, they have something to read while uh, and trying to learn what their parents are doing. And a little education for everybody, basically. They have a little kid section, yeah. a little adult section yeah. in there. And so we could just have the little free library is out there. Yeah. So you just be right on the you, site. You take a book and you leave a book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a book, leave a book or, or a reference guide and put it back. I mean, but I think that'd be great to be on site because people aren't going to run to the library, grab a book, and then go to the garden. They're going to do the garden on the time that they have. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to have something like that just right there. Uh, a wonderful addition and also maybe bring more interest. Yeah, I've um, seen that little garden spaces elsewhere, like the free library. That's it's nice. It like builds a little bit of community. Makes it seem like people actually go to those spaces, yeah. you know, like yeah. it makes it feel a little bit yeah. Yeah, yeah. more frequented. So I like that idea. Yeah. And then we also were thinking of the, uh, I think we mentioned this before, but I, I figured I'd mention it again is the uh, a special seed dispensary for people who have extra seeds that might be good, might be bad, but you could throw it in the little dispensary and then the kids will have 
the, the seat access uh, for just you know starters and see if they get something out of them for when, when we see the, the the little kid section that we might have. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I, I don't know if I can find time for both of them, but if we can get a little seed dispensary thing built so that people just deposit their unused seeds, but who knows if they're still good or not viable, they'll have something to test with for the kids. That's fun, yeah. We also do have the seed library too that we could put up on the a bulletin about that or something in case people are looking for specific seeds yeah. for their plot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of good ideas here. The, the one other I thought of, because I saw the way the fence is already leaning. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was thinking, I've seen it done with a lot of uh, properties lately is they get a special fence that's kind of uh, formed. It's hollow. It's just a, a wired fence. But what you do is you fill rocks in it and it becomes a stable structure. I'm wondering if, because we have a lot of farmers, a lot of farmland, and they're always telling up rocks could we have some kind of a collection thing on site there maybe one of those um dumpster bags that you have that, that you can get for free actually because you've got to call them for them to charge you for it mm -hmm. you can just get one of those have uh, people bring in the rocks that they don't want on their land throw in the bag and we slowly fill those up and create a whole new wall for the garden and be more stable mm -hmm. and free mm -hmm. except for the wire fence which the wire fence doesn't cost much right it's a pretty right. fence so that and then we won't even worry about those things falling off yeah. anymore. Yeah. We don't worry about maintenance anymore because rocks. <laughs> I mean, it just solves a lot of problems, bring, and we don't have to worry about leaning. Bring us your rocks. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> hey, uh, people want to get rid of them off their land all the time. I know that they. Some people get dumpsters for that kind of thing. Why not ask the locals? Yeah. Hey. We're, we're trying to spruce up the walls. We're trying to make it so that they're self-maintaining. If you got loose rocks, bring them on over. Just dump them right in a bag. We'll take care of the rest. Just make sure they're not bigger than we can carry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should do the small, smaller ones. Or we have to get some jackhammers and break them down. <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that would be a good way to at least look into that kind of thing too, because I mean, less maintenance, the better. Yeah. Is that something that we could like kind of plan for throughout the year and kind of put calls out via social media ah. and then maybe have a fence reconstruction day together next spring by the time you've gotten a year's worth of rocks? I mean, you need a lot of rocks to do a stone wall. Yes, you, know? you will. Like, so. I'll bring my excavator all over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be fun. You could like, you know, kind of then have a day about it and well, what's nice about these preform fences too is you can do it in sections yeah. so not necessarily have to do it all in one freaking shot you could actually do it over the year course of like years yeah. if you wanted to i'm just saying is yeah. you don't have to rush it you can just you know like rome one day at a time <laughs> yeah i could have like a couple days well, next year <laughs> I built some rock walls. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It is oh, a lot of work. Yeah. But it's fun. Like if you do it in a big group, like yeah. you kind of get people and, together. And, and we all have kids. Dial <laughs> the little ones. Yeah. There's already several wheelbarrows full of rocks in the by the well. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. We yeah. right there. I just followed the excavator with a hook and I can pick them up now. I don't have to look. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the interest of time here is going on. It's 818. So <clears throat> I did want to try to get to the um, open farm day. I don't know if I'm going to, if we can talk about the scale. Stan Braska is upset about having to pay whatever it is. There's a fee to get your scale calibrated. Do you have that? Yeah, and I have a lot more scales than Stanley does. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you probably do. <clears throat> he, he's, he says he's only open 13 days a year, so he wants some relief on his scale fees. Uh, the select board sets, sets the fees. Yeah. Um, do you know, I haven't had a chance to look, is there a bylaw about that, or is that just... 
Uh, the one to ask would be Dennis because yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah he, I've been he, wanting to ask him. Again. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think because he does it now for right. yeah, because the town of Westville takes care of care of ours. I don't know if it's a bylaw, but you know, it's it's they come once a year and seal the scales, and I think it's a state thing. You can't just oh, okay. use any scale; they have mm -hmm. to be sealed. So I think it's just a it's a state sealing fee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so how about Open Farm Day? Um, maybe we can actually do it. It's been a couple of years, three, since we had a tractor rally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and we, we need, I think you mentioned, like toward the end of September might be a doable. That's time. better than, um, I think because weren't they talking about like Columbus Day weekend, but that's really busy. Yeah. Yeah. And if we get into October, like anybody, like my parking lot's already jammed then without adding something onto it yeah. for people that to come in. Yeah. So, so maybe more like the third or fourth weekend in September. Or second so. weekend, of, at, not Labor Day, but maybe after Labor Day. Pumpkin season, depending on how when the leaves change, pumpkin season usually starts the last weekend in September mm -hmm. when people really start to come out for the fall. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so maybe we should get between Labor Day and pumpkin season. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, are you gonna run a tip? Okay. I think Granby always does it either the. Um, I'm trying to look on their website it's now. The weekend after Labor Day. I think it? it's always the weekend after yeah. Labor Day that they do it. So mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to conflict with theirs. Um, oh, you want both? <laughs> <laughs> well, or I don't know. I mean, maybe you'd want to tack it on. I don't know. But it just seems like maybe, if, I guess, if people are visiting farms in Granby, would they come over to Southwick? I don't know. I feel like maybe for our first, unless yeah, we talk first, to them, I feel like yeah. that would be a conversation to have so that right. they don't feel like we're, <laughs> we're encroaching, on the encroaching on them. If they want it to be yeah. maybe a collaborative thing, because their agcom organizes it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe talk to them. Um, and their land trust helps out with that too. So I can't see them seeing it as a bad thing because it just generates interest and brings even more people when it yeah. more options. So, I mean, yeah. I'll say it's a bad thing, but we do we should talk to them. So, you know, definitely, definitely yeah, they yeah. could also <laughs> give us some tips in terms of maybe how to organize it. I mean, I think they keep it pretty within scale. Like it's more just like the ideas they make like maps and whatnot and, and brochures to kind of like incentivize it for kids. You got to stamp at each farm and then they get like a prize, but in terms of organizing proper, I mean, other than maybe setting up a small stand at a farm for part of the day, it seems like it's really just trying to drum movement to the farms. There isn't like events per se planned. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very straightforward and basic. And I think yeah. we should try to stick to that too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We did at one point talk about having some kind of tractor rally type of event at the same time as a sort of a rallying point right. kind of thing. Um, I mean, it seems, seems like there should be some some place you go to get your map and your passport or you know whatever. And the, you know, my question is where where would that be? You know the tractor rally was at the DPW. Yeah, sure have a they had a couple years ago, didn't they? Tractor rally? The track, oh, yeah. yeah oh, it's been like three yeah. years. It was yeah. at the DPW. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. five years, actually. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't kind of say the farming to me. Um, I don't know where we could do it, though. <clears throat> Have them pull a big pumpkin. Yeah. Like you know, Crifty Park, that's not really very visible. No, you know, it really um, isn't, unfortunately. I mean, the only place that I could think of that is central enough and might be able to house a couple, because I don't know, it's also like a busy time of year. People might be using their tractors on the weekend um, yeah. at that time of the year. Uh, 
maybe asking the Congregational Church parking lot. I mean, that's pretty central. And from there, people can kind of easily oh. take off mm -hmm. to a few different farms in town. It's also visible if we do work with the Granby folks. It's an easy enough straight shot. They can't miss it if they're coming up from Granby. It's small enough so that we feel also like we don't have to fill it with like a thousand tractors if people don't show up, you know, like scale it to our convenience, like smaller parking lot. So, hmm. well, and it's got that little park yeah. there. I mean, it's got some greenery on like BPW. Yeah. So, maybe it's not a tractor rally, but maybe there's some crafters, yeah. some food trucks. I mean, yeah. some of the we, farms might have food. You, know. you could talk to, remember those antique tractor guys used to come? Oh, yeah, Glenn oh, yeah. Fuller. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they might be willing to set up a few of their antique yeah. tractors. Yeah, contact Glenn for sure. Um, <laughs> who is that? Do you know her name? Um, right. Glenn it's Fuller a, is uh, oh, you, the gentleman. Oh, you know. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. I can give him a buzz. Yeah. And then would this be only farms that are in the farm brochure? I mean, I think those are the only ones that can kind of be patronized in any way. Um, you know. Um, yeah, anybody that's not set up for to have the public in is not going to want them tramping all yeah. over there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering as well if there could be some sort of collaboration with um the brewery in town. Because mm -hmm. that's like farmland there. I don't know if they can bring a food truck up or they'd be willing to be a place that people can visit. Some people may want to imbibe. <laughs> if we if we have a gathering or uh, area and then the actual like farm day of them where you go to farms at the gathering point you could have the farms that actually can't actually have they're not set up for the people to come to their farms you have them set up booths at that gathering point so at least they get exposure yeah so you can still yeah. give them a way to include them and uh you're also still showing all the other farms that just don't have the access out at their actual farm but at least you're you're showing that we have more than just the handful of farms. Yeah. Bringing out a lot more options. I think there's what nine in the brochure or something like that. There's twelve in the brochure. Twelve. Twelve farms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Lenita, what do you think from a sort of a competitive point of view? I mean, if you're if you're promoting your farm on Open Farm Day, mm -hmm. how would you feel about having other farmers have a booth at the Oh, the rally no. point. It's not a problem. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just check it. Out. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, no, that, I think that's a great idea. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Labor Day, September fifth. So, do we want to think about that following weekend, Saturday the tenth, Sunday the eleventh? Do we want to talk to Granby, I guess? Those, that's their weekends, that's generally. So. Oh, right. Oh, we want to, did we, I think you said a minute ago, Marissa, should we stay away from, sort of just do our own thing and stay small for the first one? And I guess it can't hurt to talk to them. Yeah, I think <laughs> if it's going to be the same date, we definitely have to talk to them mm -hmm. and just let them know we're not trying to compete. Yeah. Yeah. It could just be an opportunity for them to maybe... What's the weekend after that? That's the, would you say it was the 10th? So it'd be the 17th and 18th? Uh, yeah. 17th, 18th. Yeah. And that could work too. I mean, that's a little early for, depends on the year. Yeah. It starts to cool down. People feel like fall, it's, it gets, yeah. it gets really busy. Yeah. So, but that could, that could work if they're, yeah. if you think it should be a different, And is it going to be two day or one day? It's just one day. Saturday or Sunday? I think it's generally Sundays yeah. in Granby. Yeah, I think Sunday would be better. That time of year, especially Saturdays, tend to be a lot of soccer and yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff. Oh, and of Sundays is yeah. more of the family, yeah. family day. Yeah. yeah. Once the kids go back to school, 
They kind of flip flops. Right. Right. Sunday has always been devoted to a church day, so people don't usually have events, plans, or anything. Mm. They just go to church, and then the days just the yeah. rest of the day. Wow, it just burnt. I don't know if it's still if true. If we do it on a <laughs> Sunday, are we going to have problems with the congregational church parking lot? I was just thinking that too. <laughs> I think it starts. I think the open farm day starts like not. I think it's really ten to four. That. 10 to 4 or something it's been a few years since i've done it i for some reason i thought it was a saturday but i don't really remember very well anymore yeah we could do it as soon as they're available that parking lot's available i don't think it'd be a big deal yeah. and to be up really early on Tell Sundays. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah excuse me I'm the lutheran church they got a pretty big parking lot. Oh, well, it's true. They do too. I don't know when their services are, though, either. Yeah. Be fine, yeah. Huh. Okay. So. A start? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> it flies by. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm assuming there's not any news on the Davises. Yeah. <laughs> A 61A for two acres or less, um, or for less than five acres. Is that a sort of legislative? Yeah, I haven't done any work on that. Have to do. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's uh, <laughs> on the back burner. And I finally well, have a call tomorrow, sometime after four, when I get out of work with Lauren or Laura from the Mass Agricultural Commission Association. We're finally going to be able to connect on the phone. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's great. That's great, Tammy. Thank you. Sorry it's taking so topic. long. I'm sorry, what? It's to discuss this topic about yes. advocacy for, yeah, awesome. Yep. Yep. Sorry it's taken so long. It seems they weren't sure who to connect me to, and then it took two weeks for me to hear back from her, and then just kind of playing back and forth, but we finally said time. Good. And uh, we were talking about this at the beginning, but um, I think with the commission appointments update, uh, as it is right now, you know, Brett is nominally the co-chair, but he's still an alternate. And I don't, I don't think we can really do that. <laughs> I think because the whole reason for alternates is if that if a commissioner isn't available, then mm -hmm. the alternate can participate and vote. Yeah. So I think we got to think about. I mean, you know, Brett was here, so we can say this in person. But I think that either not have a co-chair or have it be a, one of the commissioners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so available. <laughs> 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 Any, anybody have any other uh, comments, questions? Uh, yeah, they're okay. just looking at the calendar here. There was supposed to be the 61A workshop later right. this month. Mm -hmm. um, I reached out to the parties involved, Tina Smith of MBAR, mm -hmm. Barbara Hobson, and then Sue Poor downstairs at the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. And... Um, an interest in the interest of kind of people being away. I know that you're going to be away shortly, Bert, mm -hmm. and coming back then in May. Uh, and just kind of looking at other uh, meetings that are going on. I, I I was wondering if we could push it out to the 18th of May, which would be the third Thursday, third Wednesday. I know that's a ways out, but 
I know I haven't had time to work on any PowerPoint. Um, yeah, yeah. And it seems like it's kind of come down. Yeah, to me to kind of develop that they've given me material, but I'd have to kind of create stuff from that and make yeah. visuals. So I probably wouldn't have time until mid-May to start doing that. So that uh, that's... seems fine to me. I mean, you could even want to go to the 25th. I mean, if it's if you're really crunched for time. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Um, yeah. I'll see, uh, I'll see what they say in terms of mm -hmm. their schedule, but from the AdCom standpoint, is there any, there's no preference whether it's the 18th or 25th necessarily? I think so. Okay. For me. I mean, it would be an evening workshop over Zoom. It wouldn't be in person, so. Okay. I, I don't believe so. I think it'd be just That's to make good. it easy so people who want to tune in may be interested in learning more about taxes and 61a can do so from home um okay so with that i have a question just because it's a workshop it wouldn't be like the open meeting or it would be kind of like a special thing if it's recorded can we have send something or Sage, you're better at sending links than I am on um, some kind of a link so people who are away or something happens or they're farming or whatever mm -hmm. um they could check it out at their own leisure oh like a recorded version yeah, yeah. I think that would yeah. be great yeah yeah, yeah we have the technology right now we do yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, I'll check if that would be a, a, a meeting of us, you know, that would be subject to open meeting laws or if we're just sponsoring a workshop, well, that's the same thing, you know. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out. Well, I mean, if, if it's just a, a, a workshop of presentation stuff, it's not like we're deliberating on anything or right. we're yeah. just learning. So, I mean, right. the only way we're breaking an open meeting law is if we actually start discussing things of agenda type items. Exactly. It's not an agenda. Right. No. So, so it shouldn't, be fine. shouldn't be a an issue, I think. And we have already done our regular business May uh, 11th or whatever. Yeah, May 11th. So, right. Uh, so. I think when we did it in the past with MDAR, when they came to talk to us about APR, we set aside a separate meeting and um, it was a different time than our usual Wednesday, second Wednesday. And it was all over Zoom exclusively, I believe. So it was just a meeting or rather just a workshop, not like no meeting was called to order. Mm -hmm. right. No quorum, nothing. And I think we're just like co-sponsoring it as well. So it, it wouldn't even be like an ad com. Yeah. 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 We're just doing it with the assessor's office with MDAR. Trying to brighten our horizons. <laughs> okay, that would be great. That's good. And you know, I forgot one of our main pieces of paper here. I don't know if you took this. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, oh, there's yeah, got, two, yeah. you got it. Okay, two pieces of paper. Did you take that? Yeah. You know, and maybe not. Um, you know, when we, whenever the issue of um, conservation or farm preservation comes up, there's there's talk of the list. And apparently, you know, boards, commissions in town were asked to say, okay, which properties would you want to preserve if you could preserve them? This is the only version of that list that I've, I got this from John Goddard, uh, the town planner, who and you'll see that was put together by Marcus Phelps, who's uh, uh, the chair of the master plan committee. Um, I don't really know what most of these properties are, and if there's only two, four, six, ten properties, which seems like a kind of a small number. Tammy, I'll email this to you. Okay. Um, but I just wanted you guys to have this. So when you, I believe when people say, what is on the list, this is the list. Yeah. Um, so. I think they, just, they were going for 10 <laughs> on purpose just because they didn't want a big list. Yeah. Technically everyone would preserve the entire, entire town because <laughs> this is just heavy hitters. 
Yeah. yeah. And there's some thought in the, the select board, but we can't preserve every property. Right. No, it's gross. That's 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 true. Um, but again, we should have a, some kind of a strategy about what, what we do yeah. want to preserve when it comes up. Well, I, I did like what I, I forget which meeting we had to where we were doing this, but um, I like the fact that you could actually try to target the land to all connect together so you can actually utilize it better. Yeah. Uh, for some kind of common interest, whether it's yeah. protecting the, a river system or yeah. a forest line or something. Yeah. Wildlife habitat, yeah. migration. Yeah. <clears throat> nice way to do it instead of just having it sporadically everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And better, probably better use of the money, too. Um, well, you can also make trails out of those kind of lands. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of hikers, it is recreational, right? That's right. <laughs> so. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Sure, I would make a motion. <laughs> Let's see. I think I heard you first, Lydia. Yeah, so, Ryan, you can be second. Okay. Okay. Um, so, all in favor of Bert Hansen, aye. Aaron? Aye. Marissa? Aye. Danita? Aye. Tammy? Aye. Sage? Aye. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone.